It's Ken Kaplan here from the New England Motorcycle Museum, and today I've got an exciting bike, extremely rare, factory original paint. This is a 1975 Suzuki TS400 Apache, and it's in the bright orange with the chrome uh, accoutrements on it, and it's just a stunning machine. Big bore two-stroke, 3,700 original miles. Everything works beautifully on the bike. The turn signals, every light on it, every switch, everything's on point and original. The turn signals, the fenders, everything, original paint. Um, Kenny, is there anything on this bike that is not original to your knowledge besides the battery and the oil? Nope. She's 100% original, bone stock. Uh, compare these photos to the ones in the catalogs. It, yep, look at, look at the one in the catalog and every screw, every nut and bolt on it is, is factory original and in fresh condition. I don't think the bike's ever been crashed or dropped. The uh, um, pegs look really nice and straight. The levers, there's no damage on the side of the engine cases. The, the seat's in beautiful shape. Just a stunning, I, the nicest one I've seen it, uh, well, ever. The nicest one we've ever, ever had through the shop out of the 1500 bikes we've had through. It's a, just a rare piece. The only ones, other ones I, I've ever seen before were non-running, you know, bikes that need a restoration. So, in any event, the gauges are nice and crisp and clear. Um, bars are in nice shape. And it pulls like an absolute freight train. Uh, we went right through the bike. I've got a work order inside, somewhere around $1,500 where the preservation services were done. The tank was cleaned inside and out, um, bicarbonate sodium blasted, and then metal rescued. The, a new Peacock, was, uh, Peacock rebuild kit was installed, new, um, new uh, fuel line. Uh, the carb was rebuilt uh, and cleaned. Uh, the compression test checked out perfectly. It's got a new pulse coil uh, on the ignition, um, new spark plug, uh, brand new battery. So... Um, just a, a major tune-up was done on the bike, and it pulls really hard like you'd expect the two-stroke 400 to. It, up to 3,500, 4,000 RPMs, it pulls like a freight train. Um, it doesn't rev out on top. We're not sure why, but it won't rev out clean. I don't know if it's something wrong with the carburetor settings that it came with. We didn't change any of the jets. That's the way it came to us, or whether the um, it could be something with the CDI ignition. I'm not sure, but the only fault I could find on the bike anywhere is it doesn't rev out really high, but starts right up, first kick. Everything works great on it. The shifter's nice and straight. Doesn't leak oil anywhere. Uh, there's no indication of any leaks. The base gasket, head gasket, all look nice and clean. And the exhaust pipe. Look at the bottom of the exhaust pipe. When I see an enduro bike, the first thing I do on every enduro bike that I check is I look at the frame rails and I look at the, the bash guard. There's not a single ding on it. I doubt this bike's ever been off-road. The, the frame paint on the bottom here is original and in excellent condition. It's about as cherry as you're going to get for a 40, almost 50-year-old uh, enduro bike. So... Whose collection did this come out of? Do you remember the gentleman's name? We bought 14. Yeah, he had 14 uh, absolutely pristine bikes. A local guy out of Bristol, Connecticut. He had mostly vintage Suzuki TSs, the 185s, 250s. Now, this was the only 400 in the collection, and this is the last one from his collection. When we posted the video of, of the collection, we immediately got probably half a dozen emails on this bike. Right, the phone was ringing off the hook, and it wasn't ready for sale. So we went through all, we let's save the best for last. This is the last one out of the 14 bike collection that he had. And the 250 sold for big money. There was an orange little brother this same year, the yep. 75. So, yeah, we, the, uh, the orange 250, is this exact same paint scheme, went for $4,500. Buy it now. And it wasn't. And, it had. It wasn't as nice as this one, as far as being 100% well, original. Not only that, but that's the 250. This is the the TS. Yeah, 400. The big four, bore. 400. The one. You know. Look how big the the cylinder. Look at how big the head is on this thing. Look at. Look at you know? It's a massive beast, and it pulls like an absolute freight train. The clutch and tranny shift perfectly. The brakes work great. The suspension's on point. Um, we did pull the uh, baffle out. We thought that maybe it was carboned up. You can see they scratched it, the the paint on the the baffle a little bit. Um, pulling this out to decarbonize it and uh we've we've had oh my we've had a bunch of these enduros from the dozens dozens hundreds of, of, of vintage enduros if you look at our youtube channel hundreds of them it's what we specialize in you never see these come in with original paint original tire tires 45 year old original tires that aren't dry rotted but, but i was going to make it a, a comparison we've had a lot of yamaha uh, the, the, the 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 360 Enduros, which the exact same class as this, but this blows the doors off of those bikes in, in uh, way more torque in, in aspects of the, the handling and and, and uh, the, the orange, the, orange and the blue paint and, and, and just the, the torque, absolutely. Yep, it's so. it's an absolute beast. So uh, yeah, pulls really hard, and um, the value of the Yamahas, we just sold it in AT1 uh, in an, an AT2, right? The uh, 250, 68, 250 no, enduro. No, no, so DT1. DT1, and we sold a bunch of 360s from the 70s also, right? RT, RT, RT1 360s. 
So and anywhere from from six to ten thousand for the really mint condition Yamahas. Six to ten grand. Something yeah. With original paint. That's been, that's been this bike's got to have a value of six thousand plus all day long on, on the low end. Find, six. Find one nicer for sale today. You, find one for sale. Period. Today, you, you will not find one for sale. We're going to auction it off. Let the market determine what the value it is. I wouldn't be su surprised to see it bring over ten thousand, like so some of the other enduros we sold recently. Um, if you have any questions about the bike, call us eight six zero four five four seven zero two four. The paint is in stunning condition. Uh, it does have a couple of dings, little beauty marks on the tank right here. Little acorn sized dings right there. This side cover is in beautiful shape. Uh, the rear fender is nice and nice and shiny. Look at look at the sticker on the back. 45 year old sticker. You power wash that thing, it comes right off. Somebody took really, really good care of this. This side cover is in mint shape. This side of the tank is in is in mint shape. No damage on this side. And the front fender is in beautiful condition. A uh, little bit of patina on the paint, but it's original. So enough flapping of the gums. Let me give you a quick demonstration. Like I said, this thing pulls like a freight train. This would be a great enduro for two up riding if you want to bring your friend for a ride on the back it's got the pegs and it's got the power to pull you so got to give her a good firm kick she fires right up purrs like a kitten the turn signal listen to the exhaust note on this thing turn signals work left turn signals right turn signals Horn, rear brake, headlight, high beam and low beam, both work beautifully. And uh, listen, listen to the exhaust on this thing. That, folks, is what a big bore two-stroke is supposed to sound like. Music to my ears. Good luck finding a nicer one. You're not going to. Just pulls like a freight train. Massive amounts of torque. That's what the big bore two strokes are notorious for. Front end will come right up, just crack throttle. Like we said, the, the engine compression checked out perfectly. There's no noise coming out of the motor. So usually you can tell when, the, when uh, a two-stroke gets clapped, the engine starts making uh, noise. You know, they get a little noisy. This one's super tight, and it sounds really, 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 really tight, crisp, and um, fresh. So, um, again, she runs beautifully up to about 3,000 RPM. Right around 3,000, it starts breaking up a little bit. So. I'll tell you, most of the power on these bikes is down low anyways. They, they, they don't like to be wrecked. Oh, it's definitely a torquey beast, you know? They like being, being short-shifted and run down low, and it's phenomenal. Yep, yep. But if you rev it out over 3,000, she starts to break up a little bit. Like I said, we don't know if that's a... Um, could be something to do with the uh, the, the um, CDI ignition on it or, or coils. I'm not really sure. I'm not a mechanic, but uh, the guys that uh, worked on it said um, that, uh, you know, they cleaned the carbon, and that's, that's how it runs, so... Um, if you have any questions about the bike, again, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Uh, she pulls like a freight train, starts right up. Even check out the gauges on this thing, Kenny. Starts first kick, 3,000 miles on a 400 Enduro. Thing's a beast. There's an exhaust on it. Well, it's getting a little cold out, it's getting dark. Um, we'll have a full write-up on the work order in the ad in case I left anything out. We put about $1,500 of preservation services in it. Not much in parts, somewhere around $100 in parts, uh, just service parts. So it didn't really need, need anything major. So it's such, such a low mileage bike. So good luck bidding on the bike. Keep the shiny side up and God bless America.